shared CNUI data tables seems complex at first glance, but actually pretty simple once you wrap your head around it. In this video, I'll show you how I got up and running with shared CNUI data table with proper vertical and horizontal scrolling, ability to add different components inside cells other than text, toggle column visibility, as well as sorting. Before we jump into the code, there's just a few concepts we need to go over first. This will make the rest of the video much easier to understand. Chat CNUI table utilizes TanStack table. TanStack table is a headless UI library for building tables and data grids. Though to my confusion, it doesn't really provide much UI rather than it provides the controller and the model for the table. Think of it like the blueprint of how the data should be presented on the table. It's not too far off to call it somewhat of a table state management library. It exposes states to allow you to utilize your own state management solution while abstracting the complicated logic away. So all you have is the actual state itself, like which column is visible, what is sorted, what is filtered, etc., etc. This makes it extremely versatile and flexible. Chassis and UI is the library that provides the actual styled components for rendering. So by combining the two together, we have a full fledged customizable and easy to use table. So let's jump into creating our own table. I will be starting from a completely blank Next.js project. After creating the project, initialize Shad CNUI and add the button component. To make sure Shad CNUI is working, I will add a button component to the root page. Start the dev server and see if it appears visually. Yep, it works as expected. So I'll move on to adding Shadsy and UI table component and installing TanStack table. Before we start building out the table, let's quickly create some dummy data for testing purposes. For this, we'll need Faker.js. I will create a user type. This defines the data model that the table will be populated with. Think of each variable in this type as data for each column. So here we'll have first name, last name, age, email, and comments column. I will now create a create user function that uses Faker to generate users of type user. Then I'll go ahead and define a global variable named data that will contain a stable reference to all of our users. TanStack table requires a stable reference in order to prevent bugs that causes infinite rendering. Stable reference just means a variable that doesn't change or is recreated on every re-render of a component. Now I would like to display the table with the user data that I've just created. First, create a new data table.tsx file, navigate to the data table documentation on ChatCNUI website, copy the data table snippet and paste it into the newly created TSX file. Go back to the root page.tsx and replace button with data table component. Notice here that the data table actually requires two props, columns and data. We already have our data from the global data array of users who will need to create the column definition. Let's use the column helper from TanStack to create our column list. This column definition defines how columns will look inside the table and what each cell will display. Here, we use column helper dot accessor. The accessor is one of three column type definitions. It has an underlying data model which can be sorted, filtered, processed, and arranged in different ways. Basically, think of this as the default type of column you'd use if you were just trying to display data. The first argument will be the exact name of the variable in the user type. As for the optional params, I'll define the header, which 
can return either a string or a React node to display on the column header. And then, as for the cell, it is very important that it returns info.getValue. If you do not define this param, when sorting, the sorted column will not actually sort properly, or it will not display properly. I'm not certain why that is at this point. Let's quickly take a look at how our table is shaping up. I'm getting this error about client component, and to fix this, I'll just need to add use client at the top. Table is looking a little janky, and the header is not even shown. Let's fix that up in the div class name. Now that we have a first name column, let's add last name and a checkbox column which will allow us to select rows. Notice that I'm using another column type definition here. The display column does not have an underlying data model, so it cannot be sorted, filtered, or processed in any way. But it is used to display UI components. In this instance, it is used for a checkbox. Now that I've mentioned checkbox, looks like I'll need to grab the checkbox component from Chatsy and UI's website. One thing to note here is that I've made this mistake countless times where I select the component from Radix UI rather than Shadsy and UI. Kind of a little annoying thing since Shadsy and UI relies on Radix UI and they both name the components the same way. Okay, looks like the header checkbox is working, but I also need all the cells in this column to have checkboxes as well that triggers selection. So let's add checkbox to the cell param. Make sure that unchecked change calls row dot toggle selected. Great, it's working. I'll go ahead and fill out the rest of the columns needed to display the data. And now we have somewhat of a table. But there's something missing, and that is a proper scrolling bar inside the table. You may have noticed that there's a scroll bar to the right, but that's part of the web page. I don't really want the scroll bar to be there. I want it to be inside the table itself. To add a vertical scroll bar inside the table, we'll have to wrap the whole table in an extra div. Specify the exact height that the table should take up. In the inner div, add flex column and overflow hidden. Now we can see that the vertical scroll bar has appeared. However, I'm not a big fan of the scroll bar track. I just want that to be completely transparent. I'll go to my global.css file and at the bottom, add the following WebKit scroll bar utilities. Now we no longer see the scroll bar track. You might be asking, can we do this with Tailwind classes? Well, let me know down below in the comments if you figure out a way. With the scrolling working, I'm noticing that the header is disappearing when I scroll down. I'd like to make sure that the header is always visible on the table. In the table header, add the following classes. This will ensure the table header is sticky and is always on top no matter where the scrolling is at. Before I implement sorting, I'd like to add text at the bottom of the table to indicate how many rows is selected. I will make use of the table state that Tanstack has kindly provided. Add a div at the bottom of the table and use the get selected row model to access the number of selected rows and use get filtered row model to access the total number of rows. Why get filtered row model? for the total number of rows? Well, here is where it's crucial to understand the underlying order of row model execution from Tanstack table. The get filtered row model returns a row model that accounts for column filtering and global filtering. So if you were to add a search bar and filter the results, the number of results that is returned from this method would account for that. Right, let's get to sorting. It's probably easier just to create a default header component that we can reuse. 
So let's do that now. The default header props will utilize a generic type and you'll see why in a moment. Simply add a div and in the on click event call, toggle sort on the column. Okay, let's see how this works. Looks like I've missed the name prop and I'll also change the on click event to on pointer down. The sorting also didn't work. This is because I forgot to add the get sorted row model to the table state. Also look at the green background. I clearly see that the default header isn't taking up the full height. To fix that, we just need to add flex and center the item. To visualize which way the sorting is happening, I wanna add an icon next to the name. For this, I'll grab something from React Icons. If you happen to encounter an error after installation of React Icons, like I have, just restart the dev server. Now that sorting works on the first name header, let's make sure the rest of the header is also using default header component, so sort will be enabled for them as well. Toggling column visibility is pretty straightforward. How I like to do this is if I right click any column, it should pop up with a context menu allowing me to toggle column visibility. Let's head to Chad CNUI documentation and grab the context menu component. Wrap everything inside the default header with the context menu trigger. Then again with the context menu. Inside context menu, add context menu content. Grab table state from the info passed in. Filter out any columns that cannot be hidden. Then map each column to a context menu checkbox item. Column ID will be the name that is displayed representing each column inside the context menu. Now, if I right click on the column header, you'll see that a context dropdown appears and I'm able to toggle visibility on any of the columns. One thing here that I'd like to change is that the action column, which is the first column containing the checkboxes, should always be shown. In this case, all we have to do is in the column helper dot display for the action column, set enable sorting to false and enable hiding to false. Now I should no longer see the action column showing up in the context menu. One weird bug here is whenever I right click the header, it also toggles sorting. To fix this, all I have to do is in the default header context menu trigger on pointer down return if the button is equals to two, which represents the mouse right click. Let's now add a drop down column. This will be a quick and easy one to implement. In the columns definition, add another column using column helper dot display. Set ID to more, and for each cell, add a drop down menu from Shadsy and UI. If you do not have this component already, just install it using the Shadsy and UI CLI tool. Add button inside the drop down menu trigger. Then inside the button, we'll use the more vertical icon. Set the button variant to ghost. Inside the drop down menu content, I'll just add a couple of menu items. Now we have a button that triggers drop down menu. One weird quirk you might notice is that once we have selected a menu item, there's a ring around the trigger button. This is one of those Radix UI weirdness quirk thing. To get rid of this, in the drop down menu content, add on close autofocus prop and prevent the default behavior. Another thing I'd recommend doing is if we inspect the HTML element, you'll see that we have a button within the button. This is because we have a button inside the drop down menu trigger, which itself is a button. To only have a single button, just add as child prop to the drop down menu trigger. Boom, and there you have it, a functioning table. 
I'm planning to create more content on tables such as lazy loading, infinite scrolling, and resizing. So feel free to subscribe if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button. It really helps me out and lets me know that I should make more of these kind of contents. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.